Hello everybody, today is the 6th of uh, January 2012 and I have a historical uh, article or a newspaper article dated uh, Chicago, December the 30th, 1913 from the day book. This is on page 29 of 32, so I got the very end of the uh, newspaper, so really not that important of a story or just worth putting it at the very end. The Federal Reserve Act was signed on December the 23rd, 1913, so this is exactly seven days after the signing. The article is entitled, The Working Man That's Who'll Profit by New Currency Bill by Kenneth, Kenneth Wilcox Payne. It is a new proclamation of emancipation, the American wage earners emancipation from the slavery of fear that President Woodrow Wilson signed when he wrote his name on the new currency bill. Edmund D. Holbert, vice president of the Great Merchants Loan and Trust Company of Chicago, the man who is said to have been an intimate advisor of the president on currency problems and who is being mentioned for the member of the Federal Reserve Board, made this answer to the following question, which is uppermost now in the mind of the American people. Just how, in plain, simple terms, does the passing of the currency bill affect U.S., the earners of the weekly wage, the carriers of the dinner pail? Why, it is just that. The effect of the new currency system on the poor man's pocketbook, which is the one sure thing known about this bill, explained Hobart. We are hearing intricate arguments... Let me just smooth this out a bit. We are hearing intricate arguments about its effect upon business, upon the banker, the manufacturer, and the investor. And while the arguers disagree on these points, there is one thing upon which all are in accord, and that is the new bill will benefit immeasurably the working man of America. I'm going to stop it here for now. I'll do that probably a few times. So apparently... This bill of the Federal Reserve is to benefit the working man. Oh, we'll get back to that in just a little bit, but let's continue reading on further. The passing of the bill means that the bitter blow which used periodically to hit the poor man square in the face, the blow of being thrown out of work indefinitely, will fail no more. It is the fear of that catastrophe ever present in the wage earner's mind in former years from which the new currency bill emancipates him. We all know every few years the God org financial stringency has stalked grimly about our country. Each one of us has felt its talents. But while he has merely hampered and worried the wealthy man, he has actually gone right into the poor man's home, taken the bread from his children's mouth and the warmth from his fireplace. For it is the poor man who was thrown out of work by the shutting down of factories. And out of work... He has found himself face to face with two elemental enemies which no human being living in civilization ought ever to be forced to contend with, starvation and freezing cold. It was only a few years ago during the panic of 1907 that these things happened. Hundreds and hundreds of plants shut down, let their fires go out and lay their men off, yet there was no overproduction. Yet there was hardly an article being made in those factories which was not widely needed throughout the country. Then why did these plants shut down? Why, simply because the manufacturers couldn't get enough hard cash to pay their employees' payrolls. The nation was in the situation of a wealthy man who enters the fine restaurant and finds he has left all his money at home. The man has all kinds of wealth right on him, invested in jewelry and clothing, yet he hasn't a single cent of cash with, with which he needs to pay a square meal. So with the employers, in times of panic like that of Naitito 7, they couldn't find the currency which to pay their men, and all the time the country was really rich, and all those manufactured goods which currency represents, the wage earners was laid off. And not only did his wage Ceased, but the bank suspended payment and he couldn't get all of his savings. Now this does move on to the next page and I'm going to continue on further within it. But before I do, I just want to go over a few of these points and that will help me go further within this article. 
Now I find it very interesting how they didn't take too long to mention stuff about the Panic of 1907. Now from research, it, is seem, it seems that this Panic of 1907 was all set into place to bring in this Federal Reserve System. Furthermore, we talk about uh, stuff about this passing of the bill, which was done by the president. Now, the, from the research that I was that I've been doing, that President Woodrow Wilson was paid off nicely or substantially so that he would pass the bill of the Federal Reserve Bank. So they created the problem, and then they create the solution. Number thirty of page thirty of thirty two which will finish off this article. Okay, and there's not much left in it. The secret of its operation lies in the provision for the rediscounting of commercial paper. This term means roughly that a bank which has lent out money to a manufacturer on his promise to repay can if a sudden need for currency arises, go to the Reserve Bank and exchange a manufacturer's promise for a supply of currency. They have to explain this because people back then really didn't know what currency was because they used hard money like gold and silver and they were on the heels of saying goodbye to that uh, methodology. Currency can be called the oil which lubricates the wheels of industry. When the supply dried up under the old system, the law absolutely forbidden the banks to take any more out of their reserve fund, which nevertheless was de destined for the only purpose for one purpose of guarding against just such an emergency. But the new bill gives an elastic currency system, which in part of when the supply dries and gets brittle, the whole machine won't break down as it used to. There will be reserve funds to which the bankers can go, and that means that the small wage earners need not have any longer that terrible fear of being laid off every time the money situation grows tight. Whatever the other effects of the bill, it is surely a great bulwark raised bulwark? Maybe they said that by then. It's surely a great thing raised to protect the man with a dinner pail from the honors horrors, the horrors of unemployment. Well, it's been about a hundred years now, and it didn't take long from this dated document about uh, a decade and a half, two decades, before the unemployment rate got extremely bad. So obviously, it was totally BS that this Federal Reserve Bill was going to stop that from happening. But you see, back in this time frame, there wasn't much for people to get their information they needed. They got it from the radio, and I'm sure they would have got the exact same information from the radio. If they were lucky enough to hear that small segment that might have been talked about for 10 minutes, at the end of December 1913. Again, we can see right in plain sight that it was on print like this, but that was all that was told to them. And they were basically stated, they were told, that this bill was going to stop the problems of unemployment. So they believed it, and thus it came into play. So when you hear bills today like the NDAA, or so many other ones, Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me.